Right, well, it was a wonderful time for Marcus to actually hit me up and uh, tell me that we're doing it across the ages because um, going with Miss Erica Blackman's um, kind of theme, actually, I am dealing with going through a 12-step program right now. And I'm actually not dealing with addiction, I'm dealing with compulsion. And if anybody else has dealt with OCD before, um, there's two different kinds of OCD. There's the fun kind of crazy, which is not me. Um, so the fun kind of crazy is like, you know, we get to flip the lights on and off and, and count how many tissue, pieces of tissue paper we use and things as such. Then there's a different kind of compulsion. A dark kind. And I've been suffering from it for about coming on eight years. And my dad doesn't get it. And my dad doesn't get a lot about me. And that was addressed this past week, actually. I went and visited some of my family up in New Hampshire, and I went up there and my cousin told me that I needed to fix my relationship with my dad, or else I was gonna be just like him, and just like my cousin, who had both times stood next to their dad on their deathbeds and had to say goodbye without fixing their relationship. So real quick, I'm actually gonna hit a poem up that I did comparing my compulsions to addiction. And I do read from my phone, so if you guys think I'm like up here texting and I just look really <laughs> eloquent, um, I'm not at all. I'm really clumsy and not graceful. Um, but so I'm gonna hit you guys up with this first. When I'm high, I'm invincible. Sobriety is a plight for the weak. Each voice has an excuse for me to get lost in the days of the week. I'll waste one form of green for another to burn, spending all my bills on sweethearts and pills. Craving him is another addiction. With history on his side, he proves a fix for my infliction. Playing ring around like rings of smoke, billowing out from below the teenager's playground while hours from recess pass and my time to play has partially passed. He writhes under my skin like a needle-infused collection caught in a sub q bubble too far from my vein for scientific manipulation to sink in and drain the energy from my hands and blood from my brain. I've seen the confrontation. I'm high enough to be silenced. My encryptions over my eyes blinded by all of these internal lies that society cries out to me, um, believing I need to be high to survive. And in a year, without him, I'll be lucky if I'm even alive. But I withdraw, step aside, and try to see it from the outside at this hot mess walking around in my shoes, pretending to reflect a salvageable, salvageable being. But my eyes are empty and dead. The person within flushed down with the last hit, and I need that last obsessive kiss. I'm losing control of my mind, my body, and now my soul. And I'm in need of a clean break, a detox for my body with all that is holy, and scrub the dirty fingertips from my face, throw my hands up, and give God my fate. So, dealing with this 12-step program with compulsion. <laughs> I'm terrible at pauses, by the way. So, just applaud whenever you want. I'll actually stop according to you. Um, but, but dealing with this 12-step program, um, I've been going through it for about three months now. Um, there are friends of mine in the room that have no idea I've been doing this. And um, I disappear for, for days at a time. Because uh, it's hard. And right now, the steps that I just got through, we're addressing forgiveness and um, regrets in my life. And with that, I realized the people that I owed apologies to. And a big one of those was my baby sister. Um, and I'm actually going to give you um, a piece she wrote that I haven't spent time with her nearly as much as I should. And for what she does for me, she definitely deserves it. So um, there's a time frame that I think of her that my regrets go through my mind, and it's that one moment late at night, and it just happened to be really good timing that the poem she decided to hand over to me tonight for this was written just about that. The Moment by Jenna Thaler. You know those moments, those moments when you're almost asleep, 
the second your world falls away. You feel things you can't imagine. You're somewhere else, not home. Your imagination runs wild. The shock of your footfalls vibrate through your body. Your heart begins to race, roaring in your chest. Adrenaline controls your thoughts and your beliefs. Throughout your body, your muscles ache to be free from the chains, the chains of normalcy. You breathe faster and faster, shaking in your own skin, and a cold chill shudders down your spine. In these moments, seconds before you fall asleep, those moments are when you believe anything is possible. So I can, I can say my, my little sister saved my life. If it wasn't for her, God knows where I'd be. A year ago when I moved back here, I was pretty much at the edge of suicide with my compulsion. And she stood next to me. And my piece for Across the Ages, um, well, it addresses just that. I had always aspired to be my grandmother, but recently I look down and at the ends of my wrists, I see my father's fingertips. I'm lacking autonomy and falling into his pressure, feeding into misogyny. I'm finding myself fulfilling my conservative boundaries set forth by his side. I've been interrupted by the broken patriarchy, a package wrapped up like a secret with a perfect little bow. I'll say yes sir and no ma'am and I'll drop down to the step for his side at his hand. And give control up. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, my father's family is screeching, preaching, and teaching for me to man the fuck up. To be a real man. To give up and take control. I'm blinded by the sight of pictures of my parents' past. How two souls from opposite sides of butchered tracks could make a child together. And that of all the seeds to sprout up, I showed up. <laughs> and now I'm an artsy, twisted, conservative minority of the majority, and this family still believes that they broke me. And they fucking made me! And I can't thank them anymore. I've seen the abnormalities splattered over the generations of my family, raised by women from a different mind entirely. Because back in the day when my great-grandmother would walk home, barefoot, in the snow, uphill, both ways, she towed a monkey behind her. <laughs> and after school, she worked for the family business as the world's youngest contortionist and a strong influence on what a real man is to me. And my mother's heart, this big, beautiful heart, has helped me save lives. I've stood in wakes of disaster, given up everything I had and it made me the happiest I could ever be. She surely showed me what a man is to me. And my grandmother's patience of Job has saved my J-O-B. Time and time again, and saved the lives of countless many. Showing me, even with a boiling temper of a Romnikyle, how a man should be. And I am the strongest man in all the lands because of how these women made me. See, my dad had nothing to do with it. And through all the hell I gave her as a child, the torture and strain, my mother still chose to make another. And this kid's sibling is the most beautiful thing that could have ever graced all the earth. And when I fought to label myself, to fight for the oppressed like me, they taught me more than any that a label-free world starts with me. Because who else at eight can stand up against their peers for their not-so-common family and just six years later come out to those same fucking bullies? Who at 14 cut the ribbons to the bow that her peers used to stereotype our family and still, she stood with pride to be like me. And who at 16 can be the first girl to captain the rifle team. And told her big transgender brother that binaries to gender roles should be a joke to people like you and me. Because after all these women raised us and braised us to a nice tender roast, I needed to realize our family table has no room for roles tonight. I'm proud to be just like her. 
because recently I learned that my baby sister is a much stronger man than me.